Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wolf Den podcast where we don't have an intro yet. That's right. <laughs> this is Hello, a- everyone, and welcome to the Wolf Den podcast, the first episode of the gritty reboot that was Wolf Den Live. It is dead. We stabbed it and we killed it because it's a gritty reboot. Now we're covered in blood and our women are scantily clad and we say the F word more often than usual. Oh, that's a, okay. So this is like a beta test. Yes. So there's, for the most part, it's going to be the same as Wolf Den Live, but yeah, uh, it'll change over time. And, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of hacked together right now, but anyway, yeah. like I'm glad most things we do, I'm glad you're here. Also, uh, Will, I decided we're, we're going to curse. Oh shit! Yeah, not in the be, not but not in the first minute of the YouTube okay. video. Okay. Well, again, Will, Will already we forgot. Start. Will already forgot how to be a YouTuber. It's been like a it's month. True, I did. It's been it's been a fun month. Uh, we did not establish uh, intro or the swear word protocol or anything like that beforehand. So I was just going by, you know. But, but you know, muscle memory uh, is telling me because right. podcasting right. is like riding a bike. When you don't do it for a long time, you remember everything. Uh, your camera died. <laughs> Every Everything just freaked out. You, you, were, you were like starting to get like a weird clipping. And mm -hmm. then my keyboard disconnected. And now I'm weird colors. Yeah, you're green and purple. <laughs> You look fine to me through Discord, but through the you still sound weird in Discord. Twitch stream. That's another thing. We usually use Google Hangouts. We're using Discord because it's supposed to have a better bit rate. Uh, and uh, now he sounded weird. Listen again, beta test. We're beta testing, yes. guys. <laughs> also, uh, thank you to everybody who's here, and a uh, special hello to Marimba Pirate for the seventeen months underscore for the thirty-five months. Uh, Will, you read this. I got to fix my camera. Uh, f so where is this? Because I don't have Streamlabs open because I don't know the Twitch login information. Oh, well, then never mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we'll set that okay. up later. Uh, where did I leave? Sorry, thanks for 14 months. Getting this out of the way to not disrupt the boys. Thank you. Uh, King Rat with two months. Anders Paulson with 100 bits, which is a dollar, Will, in Twitch land. Uh, Will Wolf for president. Ghetto Oyster. That's me. 500 bits. Welcome back, Elder Wolf, bro. Kate McCat, 100 bits. It's alive. Alive. And Youth youth Hurt with 100 bits. Yay for Will being back and Bob for being green and purple. And thank you, Ackmeister, for gifting a sub to 8 bits, 8 bits and riffs. Thank you. Uh, all right. We have a decent amount of things to talk about here. We do. Uh, it was interesting because before like, I started gathering news, I was thinking, you know, it's been kind of quiet because everyone's just waiting for the next gen of syst next gen systems to come out. And then, lo and behold, there's topics, baby. We came back right when there's things to talk about. Also, Bob is now a ghost. <laughs> I was freaking... Where's my mouse now? Oh my god, everything's a problem right now. Yeah. I disconnected my my Can you hear me? I can hear I can hear you. I think we're fine. I think the stream is the problem. No, no, no. Oh, the, uh, well now my mouse isn't working. Why is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make the little window sounds. Okay, there we go. I don't know what the hell that was about. Um, I definitely screwed this up, though. Classic Wolf Den podcast. I told you it was a beta test. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll read this first thing. We should put... Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me get it open. We should All put right. what? What were you so... going to say? We should put what? We what should you put... I was just gonna say we should put beta test in the title of ah. the podcast. Will's voice yeah. is super low. It really should not be. Yeah. No, it's definitely not low. You're definitely just stupid. 
<laughs> All right, read the thing. I'm tr I'm trying. It's loading. Uh, so basically, PlayStation Five inter user interface user experience has, was revealed by Sony uh, last week. Uh, this is from via Polygon. With four weeks to go until launch, Sony has finally offered a look at the PlayStation 5's revamped user interface and user experience in a nearly 12-minute video and accompanying blog post. Probably should have had the blog post opened beforehand. The PlayStation 5 will come with some major upgrades when Sony launches it on November 12th. The new control center pop-ups with the press of the PlayStation button and offers players some key console options without ever suspending the game. The new activities feature a kind of a kind of beacon for developers to point players towards objectives. Via a picture-in-picture -picture mode, players can jump to different levels or see their in-game progress without going back to the PlayStation 5's dashboard. For example, in one act for example, one of the activity cards for Sackboy, A Big Adventure, tells the player that it will take about 10 minutes to complete their current mission. Another card offers the name of a different level, letting players immediately jump to something new. The video shows the PlayStation 5's rest mode boot screen, which takes players to a PlayStation 3-esque start screen and user selection. The UI, including the control center, runs in 4K HDR, and the PlayStation 5 can capture 4K screenshots and video. Game developers can even choose to mark certain screenshots with a spoiler warning when users send them to friends via the PlayStation Network. Sony's demo boots right into the Sackboy Big Adventure control center, and we see some of the activity cards mentioned above, but at the front of the control center is a recent Sackboy screenshot and a prompt for new stories related to the to, related to the players' games, Sony then moves to preview the friends and party menu. Unlike on the PlayStation 4, the friend menu simply pops up inside the control center without launching into a separate wing of the UI. Players can look at their recent parties or tap the square button to create a new one, all with the all with the game running in the background. Players can use this same in-game system to check their download status, control our battery life, and more. The video then jumps into a deeper look at the activities card. Despite being in Sackboy, a big adventure's overworld, the player has unfinished missions. The player has an unfinished mission lying around. They're 33% done with a big adventure. Instead of jumping into the mission via the overworld, they select the mission. Uh, in the activity card menu. The activity card lists their current objectives from the mission, how far along they are, how long Sony estimates they have left. With another tap of the button, they can jump into where they left off in that mission. Are you getting all of this? I'm getting all this. I, I also fixed everything. Everything's fixed. All right. Wait, uh, rock and roll. So I have, ne I have not actually seen this. Uh, this UI thing happened last week. The, the, yeah. The, they yeah, and it was the, a big deal because, like, not like Microsoft really showed off what the the UI of the Series X was going to be, but they were like showing it whenever they showed previews and demos of the system itself, and it's very similar to what um, the Xbox One experience is. It's just an evolution of that. Um, Sony hasn't really shown a lot about uh, what the menu system and crap is going to look like on the PS5, and people really seem to care about that. Um, so this is it. A lot of it is you can do things without actually leaving the game. Yeah, I'm noticing that. It looks like there's they're not showing a home screen. They'll show it eventually. But basically, because right now on PS4, if you hit the, the PlayStation oh, button, there it is. you back out to the you know the home screen. This, you hit the PlayStation button and the use the the activity, what do they call it? The control center right. pops up. Uh, so, so so this I think if you look on screen I think I finally got the I got the yeah. um the home screen. Yeah. Uh it looks very similar. It looks similar to the PlayStation 4 experience, mm -hmm. but it's different in a lot of like subtle ways. Well, so does Xbox. Well, Xbox it's like almost exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is a bit more refined, I would say say compared to the PlayStation 4. Also, not uh I don't know if it's going to be mentioned in this article, but 
the big thing is the store, the PlayStation Store, is now integrated into the system itself rather than launching a separate app that connects to the PlayStation Store via the internet. Because traditionally, connecting to the PlayStation Store has been a slow, buggy experience on mm-hmm. the console itself. But now the store is integrated into the system, so it should load a lot faster and be a lot snappier. Apparently, I have an audio hum that I tested before, but apparently I didn't do a good enough job. So, I mean, Xbox was going for the whole snappier uh, thing because they have the whole instant... Well, I mean, Xbox One X has instant on. Uh, The Series X has uh, Uh, instant resume. resume. Yeah, Yeah, quick resume. Uh, I believe Sony has something similar to that, but it's not the insane, like, you can quick resume six games at once. Right, right. I think it's just one game at a time. Uh, that's how uh, Game Pass works. You yeah. only do one game at a time, I believe. Uh, so people were freaking out when this was when this came out. There was like the news of the mm-hmm. day last week. Uh, who yeah. really cares? <laughs> you know, like I'm into it's... UI design and stuff, but like this isn't what's gonna make me buy a PlayStation Four. You know. I know, but like it's five, whatever. I don't know. It's I'm weird because like it's not one of those things I would have ever thought about. But like people were just like clamoring to see what it looks like. I guess because like Sony hadn't really been showing a whole lot of it. People are like, you know, wondering because you know we're four weeks away from launch. That's not really a good sign. Yeah, yeah. Like I do want to see what it looks like. Like I yeah. am, I am curious to see what I'm gonna be working with when the thing actually comes out. But mm-hmm. it's not the most important. Here's the thing: uh, the PlayStation Four, the, the Xbox uh, One UI is garbage, and and it was it was well way worse in the beginning. It's gotten yeah. a lot better. The PS4 UI is not great either. It's just a line. Yeah. The Switch UI is actually pretty good. A lot of people give it crap because you can't have themes and you can't have uh, uh, yeah. pictures, but it's simple. Yeah. When I pick up the game system, I just want to play the game. Yeah. I don't mind the PlayStation 4 UI because it is just a line, but you know it's similar to the Switch in that it's all you have. You literally have all your ducks in a right, row. Right. And then at the end, you can go in and like find anything that's not in, you know, your main line. And I like how like each game has like a, its own like menu page that you can look and see like your stats and you can go directly to its store page and whatnot. That's cool. Um, yeah, the Xbox One interface gets more confusing each time they update it to try to make it better. Uh, the, the Xbox Series X UI doesn't look that much better than the Xbox One. I think UI. it's exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, it looks the same. This, yeah. I mean, this seems like there's more of a focus on just get me to the game. There's more focus on get me to the game and also like uh, player activity. Like a lot of it is trying to help you uh, ag- advance in the game, get the trophies you're looking for in the game. Um, so the next paragraph was sh- Sony shows off the uh, PS5's new game help feature for some missions, a PlayStation Plus exclusive benefit. In Sackboy, players can hover over specific objectives and get an in-game guide to help them find what they're looking for. The example shows two different screenshots and a 20-second video, which pl- uh, plays inside the card. Players can even place the card like this in picture-in-picture mode so they can watch the game help video while they play. So that's interesting. I'm looking at the uh, the main homepage right now. Uh, it yeah. I mean, they have categories, so that's good. Mm-hmm. It's not just one big ass line. Uh, someone yeah. in the chat said that Switch is a big ass line too, but that's all games. Yeah. And then there's like you know YouTube, but yeah, there's so much more crap that you could do on PlayStation that it all just gets thrown in that big line. Well, I don't know if you know this, if you saw this, but on the main menu of the PS5, it's there's two categories. There's games and there's media. Oh. And they, they only showed up the game side. 
Ah, uh, well, that's yeah. good. I think that's good having categories like I, that. Me too. I think that's the only. That's like the only logical thing to do. I mean, uh, people really want folders for the Switch, and I think that that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. At least the Switch has the and more at the end, you know? Yeah. Well, the PlayStation 4 has that. It's got, like, the library at the end. It's but so get far. There, you have to get <laughs> Yeah, because you have to get through your Netflix <laughs> and your, all your other games that you don't play and uh, PlayStation Music and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, players, uh, what is it? Player, the player then gets an in-game notification for a new voice chat with a friend instead of popping out of the game like on PlayStation 4. The players can jump immediately into the chat with a few taps. And due to the DualSense controller's built-in microphone, they could start talking without having to plug in a headset. I did not know that the DualSense had a microphone. Oh, yes. That, yeah, that, that, was, like a, very... that was a big deal. There was like a whole yeah. article about how it's going to read your thoughts. That, that, like, <laughs> like I, I think having a microphone in the controller makes a lot of sense. Because you already have yeah. a headphone jack there. The thing's already in your lap. Like, yeah. Uh, I'd much rather the microphone be in the controller than in the uh, the camera, you know? Yeah. As long as oh, they yeah. do a good way of filtering out the button sounds. Yeah. But also, it should it should default to off. Yeah. You should have to manually turn it on every time because uh, I frequently forget that I have a microphone in the camera and having a microphone even closer to you is probably going to be a, a, a problem. Yeah. But anyway, there were articles saying that it was a big invasion of privacy because not. Well, yeah, people, I think people, one of the articles we have touches on that. Oh, okay. Pe yeah. People should have to opt into having a microphone or something. Yeah. I think people are a little, a little off the deep end with that. Um, uh, this article just continues. Um, it can you can get an invite from your friend live streaming a different game and then watch that live stream while you're still playing your current game the That's example they cool. give is the example they give is the the main player is still playing Sackboy, but he's watching his friend's live stream of uncharted lost legacy in the bottom corner of the screen um and then done with the solo play solo gaming and stack boy uh the player opens the control center again and finds an activity card showing their friends playing destruction all-stars they click on the card and start the joining process to to a group up with their buddies exiting out of sack one quickly loading destruction all-stars so if you see your friends are playing a game you just click on the card and you join their game that's good i mean i have a problem with uh with joining people's games and stuff it's always a problem for me it, i mean it's especially a problem on the nintendo switch it's a freaking pain in the ass yeah but on playstation um i have everything set to private right so it's always a huge and, and i the the i have all I have all my PlayStation friends, and then I have the real name requests, which are my real friends. Yeah, and it'd be nice to have them separated. They're kind of like separated in a list, but it'd be yeah. nice to have like a folder with just. The... So I, again, I think this is only if like the people are in your friends list. So it's not like some rando can just join your multiplayer session. Mm -hmm. um, this is good because I know I've had situations where my friends are playing online and they don't invite me. <laughs> so look out. <laughs> All right, and this is the part where they talk about the actual PlayStation 5 dashboard, the home screen. Players can scroll horizontally through their games, press down on the D-pad to look at an individual game's various news and activity cards. While activity cards are primarily for PS5 games, players also gain some of these benefits for their backwards compatible PS4 games. Next to the PlayStation Store on the dashboard is a new Explore feature. Clicking down, players can get a curated newsreel from Sony. Uh, this includes new details for games that players currently own or follow. Explore will be available only in the United States at launch. It will come to other regions at a later date. Okay. So this, this is kind of like you know, on the Switch, the news feed, I guess. Which will show like, uh, you know, new games, new features, and whatnot. Yeah, all that's irrelevant. Yeah. My news feed uh, on the side on the home screen is all Japanese because I have a Japanese. <laughs> I have one Japanese account, and it just defaulted everything Dominic. to Japanese for yeah. some reason. Um. Okay, so that's we, we we okay cool we have we know the UI wow amazing yeah I can't believe it. 
uh, then the last thing they they talk about the the PlayStation Store being integrated into the system itself, like we said. Uh, and then to finish it off, the player shares a previously taken screenshot from Destruction All Stars and uses the Dual Senses built-in microphone to dictate a message to their friends using their voice. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, apparently, part of this is Sony overhauling the the the, the store. Yes. Um, so part of this is. Uh, they're overhauling the PlayStation Store itself, um, mm -hmm. you know, where you actually go to buy the games. Um, so the the store itself on the on the PlayStation Five is a brand new setup. It's it's not going to look like how it did on the PlayStation Four, or the PlayStation Three, because it's you know built into the system itself. Is there pictures um, of this or anything or no? Uh, I think it's in the video, but I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't see it in the video at all. Yeah. Uh, but part of this is they're revamping the web and mobile versions of the PlayStation Store. It's getting a massive visual overhaul. Um, and on Thursday, Sony emailed PlayStation customers to let them know that items like PlayStation 3 games, PlayStation Vita games, PSP games, avatars, apps, and themes will no longer be available for purchase through the web or mobile versions of the PlayStation Store. Uh. The other feature that's disappearing from both the web store and the mobile store is the wish list. Oh, all, of these weird. Items, all of these items will be disappearing from the PlayStation Store as it, launch, as it launches from October 21st to the 26th on and on mobile on October 28th. So they're revamping the PlayStation Store on web this week apparently and then on mobile on the 28th so so they're just but, but if you're on a playstation 3 you're still going to be able to buy playstation 3 games on the playstation 3 uh yes they haven't been specific about that but pretty much yes uh sony also adds that any content you've previously purchased will still be available to download on your ps3 psp or vita but if you want to buy games for it, you have to dig it out, connect it to the internet, and download it that way. I mean, well, you should have it connected to the internet if you're going to be downloading a game. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I always buy stuff off of the web store, like yeah. in the web browser, I, and then it just automatically downloads the console. I just think it's, yeah. it's easier that way. Um, but, I mean, it makes sense for these old systems to, to you know, not be there anymore uh the it, only thing does the only thing that weirds me out is that you can uh oh no never mind you can get psp games on the vita like you can buy them not on the all vita. not all of them oh but, the, uh, but PS... i mean but they exist like like you can yeah on your vita you can, you can yeah. download a, a psp game from the 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 store yeah as long as it's compatible with the vita you can download it you can't do that with playstation 3 games on the ps4 right no, no. So then, that this makes sense. This all makes sense to yeah. me. Avatar apps and themes. That's. I mean, like who I, cares? Well, I assume that they mean that for uh, PlayStation Three. I think that it, I think they just mean in general. It is a little annoying when I'm going to buy a game on the PlayStation Store, mm -hmm. and it, all of the top searches are avatars, apps, and themes, and it's not yeah. the actual game. That's annoying. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, why why wouldn't they let those be available for the new console, you know? Probably because they realize that they're all terrible. <laughs> they like, should be they, a separate, like, list. You, there should be a separate yeah, store for stuff separate like that. List. It should be a lot, they should have a lot better options, should be a lot cheaper and free, mostly. Yeah, and, they should be free. They're promotional. And they should allow you to upload your own avatars because at yes. least microsoft lets you use your uh whatchamacallit your avatar they're called avatars over there <laughs> well well yeah they need to make a little person they don't want you to like uh upload your own pictures that's gonna be a whole that could be a whole liability right. issue yeah it's gonna be a lot of dongs yeah uh this is the store it's on it's at uh 9 40 on the on the video yeah uh it looks it looks good this looks better than the PlayStation 4 store already. 
Yeah. I'm sure it's like tiled. I'm sure if they if he would just yeah. scroll down, please. He's not going to. I guess this isn't a full overview of the store. This is just a hey, we have a store. Yeah. They said they said in the end of that video that there was going to be like another one explaining like some more of the UI features, but they didn't say when that would happen. All right. Uh so, all right, so they're they're nixing so old systems, games are dying. Uh, and make yeah. a way for the I new mean, I, It's inevitability, but it is always sad when you see the, the them do this, you know, because it just means that, like, you know, the PlayStation Three will eventually. It's just, it's just inching closer and closer to death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sure people still use it, people still play it, but it's it's not. It's never fun when it just shuts down. It's like when a uh, Nintendo shut down the Wii Virtual Console. Uh, like we haven't played with our Wii <laughs> in like years, but it was still sad. Uh, all right, I'm gonna read some some stuff here. I was right. about to say super chats. Guess what? It's not that. No, it's not that. Yendahas with two months says oat milk. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Bob Weave gifted a sub to Burn Nuts. Thank you. Thank you. Screamy Yelly Gamer. With the seven months, hey Bob, please accept my Prime. I will accept all of your Primes. Hey, if you're new here uh, and you have an Amazon Prime account, you can link it to your Twitch account and you can subscribe for free. If you don't use it, you're just wasting it. Yeah. And then you get the little wolf next to your name. You get a little notification will pop up. We'll read your message. You know? Oh, you don't even have to have that happen if you want to do it in secret. Uh, Nello FN with five months with a bunch of emotes. Foul2996 with 25 months. Woo, Wolf Den Podcast hype. Hello, yes, hi, hello. Uh, anyway. Uh, oh, and we got Warlock with the Prime. And, and we got... Word statue with the Prime. Thanks, guys. Getting it in the and wire. Symptom C. There you go. I appreciate you people. Everybody's playing the game. Uh, PlayStation 5 won't listen to your voice chat, says Sony. They're not gonna, they don't care about you, Will. They don't care about what you guys uh, say. Sony has published new details about the PlayStation 5's recording of voice chats after the company appeared to be caught flat-footed earlier this week when it released the latest PlayStation 4 system software update and users caught wind of the feature unexpectedly. Uh, we didn't clearly communicate this feature or explain why we are introducing it, and we apologize for that, uh, says Katherine Jensen, Sony Interactive Entertainment's Vice President for Global Consumer Experience. Um, following the release of the PlayStation 4 system software version 8.0 on Wednesday, players began seeing a notification and message on the console regarding its party chat feature. Titled About Party Safety, the note said... Please be aware that voice chats in parties may be recorded and sent to us <gasps> by other users. By participating in voice chats, you agree to your voice being recorded. The message also noted these recordings will be used only for safety and moderation purposes by PlayStation Safety. Uh, Sony later updated its PlayStation blog post about the version 8.0 firmware to acknowledge the about party safety message and notification explaining that the recording feature would be available exclusively on PlayStation 5 when the console launches on November 12th. The update also said that the feature would allow users to submit the recordings to Sony for moderation purposes. But the entire episode raised eyebrows among the PlayStation community, especially with respect to privacy concerns leading Sony to publish further details on Friday. All PlayStation users can file reports about abusive players that they encounter online, but only PlayStation 5 users uh, will have the ability to submit a voice chat clip along with that report. Jensen clarified that PS5 users and PS4 users will be able to chat in parties together, which necessitated the notice in Wednesday's PS4 firmware update for a feature that Sony inevitably intends to explain later. If a PlayStation 5 player needs to file a harassment report, they will be able to include a clip a clip up to 40 seconds long uh, voice chat. They will be able to include a 40 second long voice chat clip in their report, 20 seconds of the main conversation with the other player, plus an additional 10 seconds before and after the conversation's uh, selection. Oh. Only the most... Sorry. I just said, oh. 
only the most recent five minutes of a voice chat will be available for players to use for this recording fu for this reporting function. Recording is enabled by default on the PlayStation 5, and users won't have the ability to disable it. I This sounds like a good thing to me. It, it sounds like a good thing, but I can see where this can get abused. I mean, I, I can see where the concern is. Nobody wants their phone calls monitored. But this yeah. isn't a phone call. This is a PlayStation party chat. And yeah. uh, this sounds like something that should be in a game chat, though. Because the party chat isn't really where the problems are. Yeah. The problems are in game chat. Game chat should be recorded. Because that's more like a public forum. A party yeah. chat can be a private thing. I think... I might have missed it, but I think it extends to that. I think they might just be calling it party chat in general. I think it extends to all voice chat. Actually, it just says voice PS5. chat. It just says voice chat. Yeah. So you might be right here. Um... The, there won't be an option to opt out of this voice chat recording feature because we want all users to feel safe when playing with uh, others online, not just those who choose to enable it. Um, Jensen emphasized that this feature will not actively monitor or listen in on your conversations ever. Instead, the recording capability is reserved only for capturing audio to accompany reports of abuse or harassment. Um, it sounds like the PlayStation 5 will, will maintain a running recording of the last five minutes of chat, but that only a user can initiate the process of sending that audio to Sony. What remains unclear is whether the recording functionality applies for all of voice chat, including in-game chat, there we go. or is limited to party chat alone. If player hears harassment or abuse online, it tends to come from random people with whom they get thrown into a multiplayer match rather than a person they've invited into a party chat. Uh, they've asked Sony for clarification. And they'll update the article if they receive any. PS5 users will be able to submit these reports directly from the console. They'll go to the consumer experience division at PlayStation, where moderators will review the complaint, listen to the recording, and take action if appropriate. Uh, Sony communication code of conduct prohibits hate speech, uh, whether using or promoting it, threatening, bullying, harassing, stalking, um, encouraging people to hurt themselves or, or someone else, or being vulgar and offensive, amongst other rules. <laughs> that that's their they they put it in quotes. Right, so right. Um, behavior merits behavior that merits a sanction versus what may be just edgy or in poor taste is not always going to be a clear cut case. Um, some submitted reports won't be valid and our team will take this as an opportunity to provide guidance and education. So, uh, I mean, something's got to be done about uh, toxic voice chat in video games. Cause, Absolutely. Because it, it is insane that you can't just... Like, I can't imagine playing Call of Duty without a crew of people. Like, you yeah. need voice... You need to be able to talk to people. And there's yeah. people who play that game and they just roll through randos. And, and yeah. same thing with like Overwatch and stuff. You play these games with random other people, uh, and a lot of the time, these other people are massive assholes, and they're gonna yeah. they're they're gonna say, you know, like messed up stuff, and and yeah. they're gonna be racist and misogynistic and all this stuff, and it happens a lot in games for some reason. It it puts a really like negative spin on uh, on competitive shooters it, it like yeah. there's like when valorant came out all i ever saw the only clips i saw on twitter were really slow looking sniper montages and uh people being racist or misogynistic so like uh yeah i think something needs to be done about that i just think that they shouldn't be recording private parties because there's no reason to do that it's a private so party you're opting yeah. into the party with the person you know so it, it sounds like they're only saving the last five minutes of audio. Mm -hmm. Anything past that gets deleted. Mm -hmm. um, that said, the, you know, the last five minutes that they record doesn't say how long that's going to last. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't say how long, like they're going to hold on to that on either your hard drive or on their end, you know, until, you know, you reboot your PlayStation or like after a week or whatever. Yeah. Is it like a game capture where like, uh, you could, uh, save it forever because like my my xbox records the last five minutes if i hit the record button and then yeah. i can save it forever yeah it's same thing on playstation 
four, you could set how how much you want to capture of a game capture when you hit the share button. Um, it does. It, this isn't specifying how long it's going to save for. My uh, camera freaked out again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm back. Um, I think the bigger problem here is is that uh, uh, it's people are upset that it's an invasion of privacy with private conversations. But I think right. if you're playing a game, you're in public. You're playing with eight other people. You don't know yeah. who they are. It's like walking into a public forum. Mm -hmm. A private chat, that's a little different because you're, yeah. you, I mean, the implication is that you know the other person. It's like a phone call. It's That's mm -hmm. different. And then if you don't want to play with that person, you just delete them off your friends. Like if you have a problem with them, if they're being abusive, you just delete them off your friends list, you know? Yeah. It, it, in the case of a game, like when you randomly get matched with somebody in a game and they're talking a lot of shit like you have to uh you can block them but you should be able to report somebody if they're being really really you know if it's if it's a big problem you should be able to report them yeah uh that's and just I get how I like feel. Wanting, i get like wanting to have audio of it you know you want solid evidence that somebody was being a, a douchebag mm -hmm. um but I get, you know, this also, if it's always recording you and you have a microphone in your controller that comes with your system by default, and that's where a lot of people's worries come in. Yeah, that's, it's kind of like, it's that's like a when, problem. It's like when the Xbox One launched with Kinect, you know, it was always on, it was always recording you, it was always listening. That's concerning. Well, th that's why I think that if it's going to have a microphone on the controller, it should opt into, you should have to opt into turn the mic on. It shouldn't be on by default. Right, uh, and there's certain games where, like, if you have the PlayStation camera, it just like I think Call of Duty is one of them. It just turns on, and then you're just yeah. talking to people. And there's certain parts of the game, like when you die, your mic turns on, and people don't know that. Yeah, that when you die, everybody around you can hear you, or the other person who killed you can hear you. Yeah. Um. I there's I mean, let's not forget there's kids who play this stuff, and there's mm -hmm. kids playing against grown ass men, and uh, these. It could be really, uh, there could be a lot of like harassment and some messed up yeah. stuff going on. So, uh, they, there should be a way to report these people. And, and if you just report them and say, hey, this dude is, you know, sexually harassing a minor or something, you're, you want proof of that. That's not something yeah. you could just report and, and, cause then everybody would just report everybody and be like, oh, that guy, that guy's hacking. I'm going to say he sexually harassed a minor. So I think it's good that there's recordings. I just think yeah. private chats should be private. And that's my stance. Anyway. Uh, I think we're done with PlayStation now, right? Yes. Uh, I'm going to read some chats here. Some whatever this is. Where what was the last one? <laughs> Symptoms85, thank you for the prime. Ma Mammal2, thank you for the prime. Celery Man. Thank you for the prime and the Cthulhu. That's I get it. That's a good name. <laughs> Fourteen months seems fair. Basically, don't be ab an abusive ass in chat, right? Yeah, I think we right? can all agree to that. Uh, I mean, everybody already has an Amazon Echo. It's listening to you all the time, anyway. Yep. That messed up stuff doesn't happen in party chats. Only public. I mean, I'm sure it happens in party chats. Yeah, but for the most part, it's way more toxic in public chats and in public chats you're in public it's like having a security camera you know yeah i quit overwatch because it was so toxic yeah i know there's a lot of stuff like that and that, that hopefully this would this would help with that yeah queer los thank you for the uh three months there buddy all right we're schmoving here all right analog our good buddies over at analog they're, they're they, coming out they got a, a new, new system thing. and it's it's based on everyone's favorite 16-bit system turbo graphics they got they got the bomber man here they're just they're just yeah. uh they're really trying to appeal analog the company behind high-end retro gaming systems like the super nt the mega sg and the pocket is turning its attention to nec's turbo graphics 16 a new system the analog duo will play turbo graphics 16 TurboGrafx CD 
PC Engine, Super Graphics, PC Engine CD-ROM, and Super Arcade CD-ROM games all in one FPGA power console when it releases next year. No, oh, excuse me. Chinese food. Uh, Analog's console. I had uses Thai food. A- oh, look at that. Uh, Analog's consoles use a field programmable gate array FPGA chip, which can, in simple terms, simulate the original hardware accurately and without software based emulation. The Analog Duo, the company said in its announcement, is the ultimate all in one NEC video game system. The system features a slot that supports the credit card size cartridges known as Hue cards in Japan and turbo chips in North America. It also supports CD ROM based games as well as original controller hardware and accessories. The system also supports wireless controllers via Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz, including 8 bit Do's TG16 wireless game pads. So you don't need a dongle. If you use if you use the Bluetooth, uh, sorry, if you use the eight bit do um, Turbo Graphics controllers, whether it's two point four gigahertz or Bluetooth, it'll just work with the system. Oh, that's good. So it has bo- it has both controller, uh, yeah, wireless. It's, it's, if you're on the website right now. It says Bluetooth and two point four gigahertz built right in. Oh, that's they should do that for everything. That's great. Uh, yeah, um, but you can use an original wire controller if you want. Um, Analog will release the duo in two colors, uh, JP in white and USA in black. Uh, the system will cost uh, $199.99 American and will ship in limited quantities in 2021. Pre-order details have not been announced. The company will also release a Hue card adapter for the handheld Analog Pocket in 2021 with support for TurboGrafx-16, PC Engine, and Super Graphics games. The Hue card adapter for the par- for the pocket, the high end Game Boy, which is currently sold out through pre orders, will yep. cost thirty dollars. Uh, and then there's the full specs for the Analog Duo, uh, followed by a gallery of images of the system. And Bob's got the website up on screen. It's two hundred dollars. Um, yes, that's a lot is, of money. It's a lot of money for a Turbo Graphics sixteen. Um, I know the the. Didn't the the Mega SG also cost two hundred dollars? Uh, yes, yes. So, so like it. I mean, look. <laughs> also, nobody... keep in mind, this has a CD-ROM drive in it. Mm-hmm. That's Analog has not put a CD-ROM drive in any of their other systems. They didn't make a Sega CD add-on for the for their Mega SG. You have to use your own Sega CD. Nobody should buy this unless they could name five Turbo Graphics 16 games. I think I can. <laughs> I wanted to uh, go because I had to pull some up just now. Uh, off the top of my head, Bonk's Adventure, mm-hmm. uh, Splatterhouse, mm-hmm. Castlevania, Rondo of Blood, um, Bomberman 94. That's no fair. That was all. That, that, that was, yeah. <laughs> All right, bom- fine. Bomberman ninety five. Uh, <laughs> no, that's true. There is a Bomberman ninety five. If you um, get this last one right, you have to buy it. You have to spend two hundred dollars. Uh, I'm just trying to think. I know. I know. There's one more. I'm forgetting. I'm not. I'm not naming the Bonk sequels. Well, I have a list of the sixteen best <laughs> Turbo Graphics games right here. Would you like to hear them, Will? Yes. I'm gonna start with. Uh, number seven, Legendary okay. Axe. I went through all these games. I haven't heard of any of them except R Type. R Type, of course. And there's Bloody Wolf. Um. <laughs> anyway, Legendary Axe, Ninja Spirit, Bomberman '93 is number five uh, on their list. Maybe I'm thinking like of '93. Well, they have '94. '94 is yeah. a thing. There have been many Bomberman on many different devices, but the Turbo Graphics will always ha- be its his home. And Bomberman ninety three, his finest hour. It was a Bomberman perfect in its own way, with the confidence to embrace all that being a Bomberman means. I e you blow up blocks and cute monsters while so. But why this one? All right, whatever. Box Adventure number four, uh, Military Madness. Uh, Yee's book one and two, and number one is Devil's Crush. 
combines the two styles of video pinball better than any other game. It's a single table spread across three screens, each with its own pair of flippers. So it's a pinball game. Okay. Yes. It's pronounced ease. I'm just going to call it wise then. <laughs> you can't, you got to give me kudos for getting close, you know? So the TurboGrafx-16, if you're not a 90s kid, it was the number three 16-bit system um, trailing the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis by a wide margin. Um, it does have a, a very small cult following. Um, Keith Courage in the Alpha Zone. That was the other game I was thinking of. <laughs> what? So I'm on the Wikipedia page for the TurboGrafx. Um it, it does have like a library of games that people do remember, but the thing is, this is a very small market. Like yes. this is tiny. Um, like Analog has always been like an enthusiast company. They make high end clone consoles specifically for enthusiast collectors. Um, but it, they made sense. They made um, an NES an SNES, a Genesis, now a Game Boy, those are all very popular systems that people definitely played back in the day. The Turbo Graphics is a very, you know, it, it's, a, it's a niche system, and now a niche company is making its own version of this niche system. It, it's so, like, there's, like, really maybe only, like, five people this is for. <laughs> Hardcore high-end turbo graphics player that needs a way to connect their turbo graphics 16 to an hd television and play the game in perfect 1080p i'd imagine that this is uh gonna be uh they're very limited they're not gonna make very many of these yeah i, I don't picture this really selling out um and look i will say like analog they go above and beyond when they do this stuff um it's going to be region free, so you can play TurboGrafx 16 games or PC Engine games. It was known as the PC Engine in, in Japan. Um, it's got two USB ports for uh, controllers and accessories. Uh, it's got Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz built in, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. They should have always done that. Um, it has a CD-ROM drive. The, the the biggest deal with analog is that uh it's it's as close to original hardware as you can get with yeah. a full actually it's usually 720p out is this full hd yeah yeah it's this is full hd the, okay. the, they're all full hd i thought they were 720p no no the, they can, i think their their baseline is 720p but there are options in it where you can upscale it to 1080p oh okay like so per, line perfect 1080p so, I mean, it's still pixels. It's not like you're going to freaking be playing. Uh, it's not like it's going to turn your Turbo Graphics games into an Xbox game. But uh, right, it's the best quality you're going to get out of these old games. Uh, yeah. And to some people, $200 is worth that. For for yeah. Sega Genesis, that was super worth it for that us. Was that absolutely was absolutely worth it. That was amazing. Uh, yeah. But Turbo Graphics, I mean... That I don't got the same yeah. sort of nostalgia for Turbo I, I graphics. Will, I'm not, nobody does. Um, I will say the CD-ROM drive is impressive because you know back in the day the Turbo Graphics 16 was its own thing and the Turbo CD was an add-on. Mm -hmm. So they're just bundling it all together into one system. I think that's really good. I think that gives it a lot more value for what it is. It's more incentive to actually go out and get this thing, whereas. If they were to do what they did with the the Mega SG, just make the the base system and you have to provide your own CD add-on, mm -hmm. I don't think that would work here because I don't think many people own a Turbo CD. Right. So I think that's actually a brilliant idea on their part to just throw the whole thing together. They could have made it an, an additional accessory that you buy. Right. But, uh, but they didn't. They're trying to pack a lot of value in this thing. <laughs> um. Okay, so I don't see this appealing to many people, but uh, I'm sure they're not going to make that many. I'm I'm sure that uh, they're yeah, gonna... no, they're, they're they're smart enough to know like this probably isn't going to hit the same wide array of people as the the Super NT or the Mega SG or the Pocket would. Um, 
but I think the people who are gonna want this, you know, are all five of you are <laughs> are gonna be psyched for it. Uh, I would be surprised to see if it, the pre order sells out though, because I know the pocket did. But again, that's a, that's a modern Game Boy. That was Game that, Boy is the most popular system on the planet. The analog pocket is probably the most sought after thing analog has ever done. Yeah, uh, and they had problems keeping up with stock for that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I expect them to not make that many Turbo graphics, but uh, I mean, it should sell out. I hope it sells out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Orlando Devalier. I'm sorry. Thank you for the prime. And Scoot, thanks for Joe, rating us. Did you know we, that's a thing here on uh, on Twitch, Will? Yes, I'm aware of what a raid is, Bob. <laughs> I may be an old, but I'm not a grandpa. Thanks, Scoot, for bringing all your your big fat stupid idiots over here. Uh, anyway. Here's some. Oh, welcome to the podcast. We're doing a podcast. Yeah, we're about we're we're about halfway through. Anyway, oh, and he's gifting a bunch of subs. Look at that. Oh, thank you, Scootish. Oh yeah, I remember. I told you to come here. Don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> I said you could come here Tuesday because I'd be streaming. I forgot I'm doing the podcast. Do not come here. <laughs> anyway, thanks for gifting us up to Rise D Pieces. Uh. Wonder Jello, Ray, Ren, Slick Rick, and Edrew. Thanks. Uh, all right. Here's something that I wanted to talk about. Okay. I saw this, I think, yesterday. MPD analyst thinks limited time 3D games will be sold individually on the Switch. Can you believe it? Uh, specifically, limited time 3D Mario games will be sold individually. Did I say you left that? Out, you left out the key word. <laughs> which is Mario. Anyway, according to Nintendo Life, when Nintendo revealed the 3D All-Stars collection on the Switch in September, it made it very clear it would be a limited time release that would only be available until the end of March 2021. And everybody was very upset about it. Yeah. What will happen to each of these games in this collection once it's gone, though? NPD's industry analyst, Matt uh, Piscatella, Yes. Uh, recently shared his own theory about what might happen to each of these games, stating how he expects them to be offered separately. Quote, I don't think these games will disappear like what would happen with the old school Disney vault, but I think there may be additional flexibility and buying options. For example, a la carte purchasing options on the eShop. That's what he said? Yeah. There are, a, a, there a are lot whole of articles... Are theorizing that. There are whole articles being written many articles about that quote that everybody's been saying since the thing came out yeah but he's an mpd analyst so it may must be it, oh, yeah, it, no, so now all of a sudden now all of a sudden there's credibility to it man. he's a smart man we're just doofuses on twitter what do we know in fact, uh, Piscatella thinks the strong sales and demand for Super Mario 3D All-Stars should give Nintendo, quote, additional confidence in bringing other legacy titles to its new platforms. In saying this, it's hard to say what a company like this could do, quote. But again, it's Nintendo, so I expect to be surprised. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing insight. By NPD yeah. analyst. Super Mario 3D All Stars isn't the only limited time release Nintendo has officially re uh, offered recently. The Battle Royale Super Mario Bros. 35 will also be playable until the end of March next year. The free to download title Jump Rope Challenge was another game that was planned as a limited time release until Nintendo decided to extend its availability. I didn't know it was limited. I jump thought, Rope Challenge? I thought it was, yeah, I thought Jump Rope Challenge was uh, for everything. Yeah, no, it's, it's limited, but they extended it. Uh, do you think Nintendo will continue to offer its classic 3D games in some way or form before beyond March 2021? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I wanted to read this because, uh, yeah, duh. Everybody's been saying this since since they said that it was a limited thing. I was like, okay, then they're going to sell them individually afterwards. They'd be fools to not continue to sell these games in one way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, I I think, here's here's my crazy theory. Um, do you remember when these games launched and everyone was talking about how they were emulated and not yes. made? That was another big I deal. Think, Everybody 
made a big stink about. I think this was a release to test those emulators. Yes. Because, you know, if they can get a GameCube and Wii emulator working fine, that means that they they can easily put out more GameCube and Wii games. Those that's one thing. Those have been shown they that can easily be emulated. The N64 is a whole nother story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recently saw a video from Modern Vintage Gamer explaining the uh, an N64 emulator, and he said that all the major ones have to be tweaked on a per-game basis. Because the way the N64 architecture worked, every game took advantage of it differently. Mm-hmm. The reason why they, did the, they were able to do the Wii Virtual Console N64 games so well is because each game had its own custom emulator. There wasn't one N64 emulator that can do everything 100% like there is for the Super Nintendo or the NES. So my theory is they're testing to see how Nintendo's own N64 emulator works with Mario 64. And then maybe they'll do another test with like Zelda or something. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we'll get uh, either we'll if we get um nintendo 64 switch online games like we do super nintendo and nes then we know that their emulator works and they can just put a whole bunch of games up there no problem if not then we might see a virtual console like thing where you have to buy them a la carte and each game comes wrapped in its own custom emulator i don't I'm, yeah it's a test it's i i think it's a means to an end i, I think that they uh they they use this as a jumping off point to to, yeah. to to make those emulators, uh, the, the game was made by M two, or or the oh, it was M two, it was the emulator house that that worked on uh, that worked on the NES Classic and the Super Nintendo Classic. Was that M two? They worked on the Genesis Mini. Oh, different different company. <laughs> yeah, it it was the people that worked on the Super Nintendo Classic. Okay. It was those people, and and I think those people also worked on the, uh, uh, you know, the Nintendo Switch Online, right? And emulator, so it was an emulator house that that made these games. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I I I think that we will see uh, more. And 64 games in the future, potentially. At least the, the technology's there. It would be very easy for them to do. Uh, I saw other people speculating that these games would be $60 each. Mm. I don't know about that. Yeah, no, that's way too steep for something like this. I mean, I they could catch that much for these games. Yeah. Uh, I think 40 I still think that's a lot because... Or 30 N64- 30 60 N64 games sold for $10 on the Wii and the Wii U. So Mario 64 should not sell for more than that. Oh, it will. (laughs) Oh, it definitely will. I mean, they sell friggin' Wii U games for $10 more than they were on the Wii U. True. You know, they they know what their uh, their IP is worth now. Um... But yeah, I think I think it's a no-brainer that that, that we're going to see these games still. Uh, what they didn't mention is that uh, I think what started this whole conversation is that the 3D All Stars Collection like is one of the like top five best-selling games on the Switch or something ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, All Stars sales. I saw the physical edition in Target the other day, and I was thinking to myself. I thought that was supposed to be a limited edition. Why is that not sold out? Should I buy it? What do I do? I did not buy it because yeah, I have it digitally. Was it hard to find for a little bit? I mean, I don't think I didn't so. even go looking. I don't think so. Meanwhile, every action figure that I want is hard to find for some reason. Oh, here we go. This is Matt Priscilla again. Uh, or whatever his name is. Super Mario 3D All-Stars launch uh, month physical dollar sales rank as the sixth biggest uh, for a Nintendo published title in U.S. history. So six. NPD video game industry analyst Matt uh, Piscatella noted. uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars trails only Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Animal Crossing New Horizons, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Pokemon Stadium in physical launch month dollars. Oh, so this is... 
this is not just Switch titles. This is all time Nintendo published titles. It oh, wow. is this is number six. Okay, so that's a bigger <laughs> deal than I would than yeah. I thought. Um Wow, all of those games are Switch games except for Smash Brothers Brawl. Wow. And, and Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> um so it's doing well. It would behoove yes. Nintendo to do more stuff like this. What sucks is that people are upset that this game didn't really have uh, a lot of polish. It was kind of just a port. Yeah. So, so Nintendo has incentive to just not try too hard with their ports anymore. Yeah. Uh, this the game. The emulation for this game. In addition to the emulation for the NES Classic, the SNES Classic, and the Switch Online games, was done by Nintendo European Research and Development, or NERD. Mm, the nerds, the nerds. Yeah. Oh, they also did uh, the technology for Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Really? Yes. Now that is a full-fledged game. Yes, that you did a video on that you can check out over on youtube.com slash wolfden. Or you can type an exclamation point video in the chat. Welcome. To or Twitch, that. Wolf. Welcome to Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I got it right here. I got to bring it out to you. You got you to gotta play this thing. Yeah, I got I to see if I got to see if my daughter is afraid of it or not. Oh, my God. It probably will. That is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. It is very tiny. It is tinier than than I expected. Anyway, you put this here. <laughs> oh, wait, let, let's. Uh, I got. I got a uh, prime from Varen. Sixteen months. <laughs> Glad to see the Wolf Bros again. Heart. Thank you, Varen. I appreciate you. All right, Stadia is getting a Pac-Man Battle Royale. Will, what do you got to say about it? Well, I'm just thinking. You know, you got you got your Mario 35, uh, and so Pac-Man is over here. Like, hey, I want in on this. <laughs> so here we go. And Tetris. Battle Royale. And Tetris, yes. Uh, the Battle Royale train apparently hasn't run out of steam yet, as now Pac-Man is jumping on board. Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle is a spin-off of the classic arcade series in which players will try to survive an all-you-can-eat buffet of death. Uh, <laughs> it looks really cool. A, yeah, announced during a Stadia pre presentation today, the 64-player competitive game will be coming first to Google's video game streaming platform on November 17th. There's a free demo on Stadia right now, but otherwise the game will be $20 when it comes out next month. Players will start off in their own maze, but will have the opportunity to invade another one's maze uh, and grab power-ups as ghosts and other antagonists try and eat everyone. Uh, it, it's not totally clear if eating each other will be an option. It better be. It's their <laughs> words. Kotaku's words. It, I just, I just, developed. as you said that, I saw a clip of what looked like two people about to eat each other, and it was very unclear what happens. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they the phase through each being, other. The game is being developed by Heavy Iron Studios in collaboration with Bandai Namco, and one of the more interesting elements that will set Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battles Battle Royale experience apart from other games is the audience interaction aspect a spectator mode will let players watch matches and vote on which power-ups get doled out no doubt in a bid to try and entice people to stream and watch the game together um, during the presentation stadia also announced that hello engineer a multiplayer spinoff uh, of creep simulator hello neighbor will be a timed exclusive and jedi fallen order will also be available to purchase on stadia starting november 24th a year after its original debut. I really like this idea that Google has where Stadia has like YouTube streaming interaction. Like, yeah, that's really cool. Bring it to Twitch now. I moved everything to Twitch. You got to give me something here. Well, hopefully this comes to Luna, Amazon's stupid oh, God. Ass streaming. Oh, good Lord. That thing, okay. I feel I, I know I've said before on the old podcast that Google has a habit to just kill things if it's not working for them, like mm -hmm. unceremoniously. They're sticking with Stadia for a lot longer than I necessarily thought they would. Um, so good on them. Amazon is also just as notorious to just kill things if it doesn't work. 
if Luna doesn't go like doesn't like launch within a month, it's dead. Mm-hmm. They, they, Amazon will not promote it. Amazon will not sink any more money into it. It will it will die a thousand deaths within a month if nobody signs on to it immediately. Amazon they did the same thing. They did the same thing with their stupid phone. <laughs> They're gonna do the same thing with this. Amazon's in a weird position because they have the biggest cloud uh storage like in the world. Yes. Um and they have Twitch. Yes. So like they're in a great position for something like that to to work. They just need I mean they're not a game developer. No. You know? Like they have they they try they have like their own engine or something. Uh but I mean neither was Sony back in the day, yeah. you know, they got in I stand by the fact that Stadia would have been great if it came out as free. Like, if I could play oh, this for free, yeah. that'd be amazing. But, uh, or, like, you know, the problem is Stadia launched at $130 uh, mandatory, and mm-hmm. you need to get the controller and whatever. Uh, and, then, and then you still have to buy the games. It, it's... And it was unclear. Like, the promise of Stadia was you could play it on any device... Um, but as soon as it launched, you can only play it on a specific Google Chromecast. And then eventually they could let you play it on like right. certain other Android TV devices, certain phones. Well, well, no, it, it launched on Chrome. Like you play it on your web browser. And that I right. think is the, uh, best feature of Google Stadia is that you can just play Destiny or Doom or whatever on your garbage computer in the Chrome web browser. Right, but, or on your MacBook, you're 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 not gaming yeah. computer. You could just play these games on on your Chrome web browser. But for the people who wanted to play this on their TV, their options were limited, like substantially and, limited. And it was marketed as like a 4K like like streaming yeah. service and, which, and all that. Yeah, which you shouldn't expect a streaming service to be the best quality that you're gonna get. You know? Yeah. There was there was a series of very bad uh marketing decisions on their part yeah playing around with freaking uh uh game pass that's freaking awesome but that's more like a netflix style yeah. service where like uh you yeah. uh you pay a subscription you just keep getting games and you, it, you could it's it's a it's a buffet of games you know i think yeah. stadia is a cool idea because like if you like when i was a kid when i didn't have the new coolest system I still wanted to play the new Call of Duty or whatever. I could yeah. just freaking buy it and play it in my web browser. That's freaking awesome. Um, but I mean, on the same note, Game Pass, uh, $10 a month or whatever, however much it is. Uh, that's also pretty cheap. And you got all these games. And it works mm-hmm. really great. I think streaming is great. I think we're going to see a lot of streaming stuff. Uh, I will try. I will try Pac-Man... Uh, what the hell is it called? Mega Tunnel Battle? Uh, yes. <laughs> is it a Stadia exclusive? It's a Stadia exclusive for now. I think it will. I, mean, I think it will eventually come to other platforms, but it's right now it's Stadia only. November seventeenth. Uh, There's a free demo right now. Oh, I could boot that up right now. Well, maybe we'll, if you remind me, I'll do it at the end. Uh, stadia.google.com oh wait I don't have a stadia subscription anymore ha huh? that's the oh no, yeah they were supposed to have a free uh like tier yeah anyway uh hey we got the xbox series x launch lineup look at that next gen yes. gaming at the, right here in front of us wow so Sony like had a previous announced all their launch games uh, for the PS5, and Microsoft has finally announced their launch lineups. Um, there will be 31 games on launch day. Most of them are also going to be on the Xbox One. <laughs> uh, Microsoft's next-gen consoles, wow. the Xbox Series X and Series S, will launch on November 10th with 31 games. The company confirmed the lineup in an email outlining the Series X titles that will join the thousands of backwards compatible games carrying over from the original Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. 
here's the full list of Series X launch titles with and which games will support Xbox's smart delivery program and which will be available on day one through Game Pass. We're not reading all these. No. Subscribers will have immediate access to nine Xbox Series X games through Game Pass on launch day. So there's the list. <laughs> there it is. There's a lot of smart delivery here. Yeah, most of these are smart delivery. That's good. That's good news. I was worried that about that. That is good news. Because that was a developer opt-in. Yes. And it looked like a, a lot of developers were not developers opting in. Thinking, yeah. <coughs> uh, there's some on here that... Uh, some There's some games that are not on here, like Cyberpunk supports smart delivery. Um, I, don't, I guess that it might just be because that won't be ready in time. Well, it's not going to be a launch title. When is that coming out? Oh, no, it's coming out after. Yeah. Okay. Never Fortnite mind. is a launch title. Don't worry, guys. Yes. We, we got okay. Fortnite. I got I was concerned. Uh, still no word about Call of Duty Warzone. What is up? Put it on there, dude. It does it. It's, it's a free game. So... Well, I feel feel like I think you can play Warzone on Xbox Series X. Oh, but it just but, won't have like any like features. Yeah, it won't be smart delivery. It'll be backwards compatibility. Okay, it'll be playing the Xbox One version, not the optimized for Series X version. Okay, I will accept that. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. But will it be that? Will that be the case on PlayStation? <laughs> so, uh. I don't know <laughs> because PlayStation <laughs> is very has not been great with regards to explaining its backwards compatibility. Mm-hmm. They've gotten better. They released a list of like five games that are definitely not compatible on PlayStation Five, but there's still a lot of questions. Like I, act, I actually pre-ordered Cyberpunk with because uh, I think I can actually play it, um, but I got it on Xbox One because if I ever you know upgrade. I want to take that. I want to make sure I can take that game specifically with me because it's a big ass game, mm-hmm. and I don't know if I can do that on PlayStation Five. I know, like uh, CD Projekt Red has said, you can do that on with the PS4 version. You can take that to PS5. You can get all the upgrades and stuff. But at least I know on Xbox that is a definite because they've been very clear that they have a program in place for things like this. Um. Yeah, they need to fix. That's Sony's fault. It's a yes. little bit uh, Activision's fault. They should say what's happening with Call of Duty specifically. Yeah. Because um, they've been really weird about uh, Warzone and Cold War. Yeah. They said that there's going to be Cold War integration in Warzone, but they, mm-hmm. they there's some messaging that makes it sound like they're going to have a new thing. I don't know. Anyway, you also have here the Master Chief Collection will be fully optimized for Xbox Series X and S. Yes. Um, if, you, if you need games to play, the Master Chief Collection is four games in one, so there you go. Um, it's coming November 17th, a week after both consoles launch. The Xbox Series X and Series S consoles are less than a month away from release. And ahead of the launch, Microsoft is announcing the Master Chief Collection will be fully optimized for next-gen. Uh, Master Chief Collection on Series X and S will run at 120 frames per second in both campaign and multiplayer modes. Split screen will also receive some improvements and the game will get 4K support on the Series X. The upgrade will be available starting November 17th, one week after the Series X and S release. Those who currently own the game will receive a free copy. Of... the game is also available on Microsoft's gaming subscription service, Game Pass. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, 4K 120, great. Everybody, everybody, yeah. everybody loves 4K 120. It's in a, campaign and uh, multiplayer. Uh, it, it's it's just that it's an old game. So, like, like it's four old games. <laughs> Uh, apparently five. Will the chat's correcting oh, right. you? Odst. Oh, uh, and reach. They're adding reach, so six. So no, no, no. There you go. No one to three. Odst and reach. Four is not in it. Four is in it. Just the hair says four is not in it. 
Halo, it says in the article, Halo the Master Chief Collection is an anthology that includes Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, Halo Reach, and Halo 4. And I will have you note that Halo that ODST and Reach He, he were says he's wrong. DLC. He says he's wrong. <laughs> he's admitting he was wrong. That's right. Oh, and Wolf Den Dad's here. Hello. Oh, hey, Dad. Um, what I was going to say was, I mean, look, I could freaking play, uh, you know, I could, I, like, 4K 120 frames per second with an Xbox original game isn't that impressive in 2020. <laughs> you know, like, come on. Like, like, cool. It's but this must not have taken that much work for them to do. I mean, to be fair, like, it's the Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition, so, if, like, it's got suit up graphics and whatnot, mm -hmm. and it does look nice. Yeah, um, I'm sure it looks great. Yeah. But, yeah, no, you're right. It's, uh, th this is really just a band-aid because Halo Infinite got delayed. Yes. I, I mean, it's so, it's good that they did this. I'm not knocking yes. on the fact that they did this. It's great. Yeah. I'm just, I just want to know what out of the gate is going to be 4K 120 frames per second. That's going to blow my mind. Uh, but like when the PS4 came out, uh, what was it? Resogun was the game Rezogun. that, that yeah. uh, everybody was playing. I was like, whoa. Yeah. What I else feel was like a launch title? The Order 1886 took a while, but that was another like... Yeah. Uh, Killzone Shadowfall and uh, Infamous Second Son. Those were launch titles. People think, were like crazy over them. I think I got Battlefield 4. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, these games might look cool and it might be cool to play Halo in 120 frames per second. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you got to look for like the Xbox One games with smart delivery or like an actual uh, Xbox One exclusive title for that. Right. Yeah, like NBA 2K21. Because when I plug or, this thing in for the first time, what am I going to play to blow my mind? You know? Well, it's supposed to be Halo Infinite, but that got delayed. Right. So that that's, that's what's upsetting. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, I mean, there's still things like Assassin's Creed, Valhalla, stuff like yeah, that. I'm sure it's going to look great. Tetris yeah. Effect connected is probably going to be really cool. Yeah. It's going to be a good game. It's not going to be like a mind blowing thing. Uh, Forza Horizon 4, Dirt 5. Racing I games always look great. Yeah, I don't play that game. Racing games always look great. So I feel like that's cheating. Uh, Cuisine yeah. Royale. Maybe Gears 5. I know you're not a big Gears fan, but they, they do put a lot of effort into making those games look as top of the line as they can be for their system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see. Uh, I don't see anything here that I'm gonna. There's no Spider-Man Miles Morales in this list. Basically, it's probably just gonna be something stupid like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Bright Memory One. What is this? Oh, here you go. Yakuza like a dragon. <laughs> there you go. Uh, also, Dad said, uh, "Aren't you surprised? I found Twitch, and it wasn't in my back." Ha! Ah. Oh, look! It's Eddie with the hundred bits. Wolf Den Dad is home, so you two need to watch your mouth. Nah, Dad, we say fuck now on this, on this podcast. Yeah, we're, we're we're cool. We're gritty. Uh, it's it's a new age. Uh, speaking of next gen. Rock Band 4 instruments are going to work on PS5 and Xbox Series X. What? Yeah, buddy, if you still play those games. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so this means Rock Band 4 will be backwards compatible, obviously. Yes, uh, Series X and PlayStation 5 are backwards compatible with pretty much their entire libraries. I would asterisk that. Uh, Rhythm Game fans will be delighted to hear that Why Rock is this Band article 4 so is included long? on... Why is this article so it long? It's very long. It is unnecessarily long. <laughs> uh, so basically, yes, Rock Band, you can play Rock Band 4 and all of the DLC um, on your Series X or PlayStation 5 uh, for free. There's no like upgrade fees or anything like that. It'll just work. And in addition to that, the 
uh, what you call it, the instruments for Rock Band Four will work on the PlayStation Five and uh, the Series X. So as long as it's within the same um, family of systems, like you can't right. use your PS4 controllers on the Series X, right? So get get dust off your peripherals, get them out of your closet. Yeah, it's time uh, to hook them up. I will note, unfortunately, if you haven't previously bought songs from older from older games into Rock Band Four, you've lost your chance. The song export licenses for the first two Rock Band games, Lego Rock Band, Rock Band Green Day, and Rock Band Blitz, have all expired. Um, the only exception is Rock Band Three, which remains available at this time, but not for much longer. Owners have owners of that game have until December first to export the 83 songs on the Rock Band 3 disc into Rock Band 4. Doing so requires a $15 purchase from Rock Band 4's in-game store. So, if you haven't done so already, you're probably never going to do it. But, <laughs> if, if, you, if you get the urge to play Rock Band again, do it now. Uh, when was the last time you played it? Because you used to play it a lot. I used to play it a lot. I honestly don't remember. I almost played it like two years ago because we were because we were supposed to go out for karaoke, and that was a disaster. Um, so I brought our 360 over to my house and I was about to set it up and I was going to be like, "Hey, come here! I have Rock Band ready. We can just do that like the old days." But we never did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wolfden Dad said, I like what you did with the screen there, and you're both not too old to get your mouth washed out with soap. Before I go for a prune juice smoothie to stay regular, when can we expect new merch? Uh, shut up. (laughs) Black Friday. There you go. Um. All right, so yay, peripherals are gonna work. Rock band yeah. peripherals. I, I mean, thank God we don't gotta buy new rock band peripherals, because uh, yes. that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> I don't see a new rock band coming out for a really long time. No, they've. Uh, I think Harmonix has pretty much said that rock band is now a platform. Mm-hmm. It's not a game necessarily that you they release new versions of every year. It's it's one thing, and just get all the songs for that one thing. I mean, that's how it should be because that's how because I mean. It it was the same thing every time they released it. They yeah, never added I, anything. I think I think that was more to do with like the economics of game development back in the 360 PS3 era that it did for like you know what Bit Harmonix wanted to do with the Rock Band platform because this was the era where everybody tried to annualize right. every video game franchise. They had to have DLC out the wazoo for everything, you know. And then by like this generation, they sort of like figured it out, but. Uh, all right. We also got here. Uh, next gen versions of Marvel's Avengers are delayed as studio works to improve game. I did hear about this. Yes. Uh, last week, developer Crystal Dynamics told, uh, told Kotaku that future updates to Marvel Avengers are in route. Yesterday's 1.3.3 patch added some quality of life fixes and extra content, including a new base, an astonishingly entertaining new movable chair, and a new type of high level mission to the game. Um, But according to a blog post published today by publisher Square Enix, the rest of Avengers Roadmap is getting pushed back a bit. Kate Bishop, the first planned downloadable character, will no longer join the Avengers roster in October as planned. Square Enix didn't provide a date for her addition to the game. The PlayStation 5 and Series X and S upgrades for Marvel's Avengers also won't be available on day one either they'll now come out sometime next year to deliver a next gen experience showcasing all that this game is meant to be i I heard i heard that this game was a hot mess when it came out it was like broken as all hell yeah i heard it was very buggy i heard it was the destiny style integration of like you know the multiplayer and all that was abysmal yeah um then that whole like uh gameplay loop was just not fun well well, there were people who fell into it there were people who liked it a lot i think it was just because it was avengers not so much that it was a good game right but it's also apparently bleeding players on pc yes yes like people are not playing this game and 
it sucks is by all accounts, the single player campaign isn't bad mm-hmm. and it actually has a pretty good story. Um, but it's just, it's trapped in this, you know, f- grindy, uh, f- you know, homunculus that's trying to <laughs> capture like the trends of other games that don't really fit into the Avengers mold. Like this should have just been um, a single player game or a, a single player game with a co-op feature where you just go through the story and you experience an Avenger style story. And maybe you go off and do like a side mission here and there. It shouldn't have had a destiny style uh, loot and shoot mechanic where you uh, endlessly grind and do raids and crap like that. Right. Right. And that that's the game they made. Yeah. And they didn't make it clear from the beginning when they announced it, that that's how no, it was going to be. I had, no, I had no idea that this was, that, that it was going to be a destiny style game yeah. until like a month before its release. So now they're trying to fix it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they're having issues doing that. Yeah. It, it, it it's weird that this is that this is how the game turned out. Is is there more to the article? Or is that it? Um, there's a note from Crystal Dynamics. Uh, in our nearly 30 year history, Crystal Dynamics has never shipped a game under conditions like this. Oh, basically talking about the the pandemic has been hard for us. Duh. <laughs> uh, this is in part why we take responsibility for developing Marvel's Avengers so seriously. It's our opportunity to pass on that core hero spirit and uh, of heart and hope, connect to you with friends near and dear, and inspire you to plant your fan. And then he quotes the Captain America, no, you move speech, which everybody uses wrong. <laughs> everyone. I, everyone uses wrong. Yeah, I don't get that. That's it. It doesn't apply. It does not apply to the situation yeah, at all. Yeah, it's so stupid. Um, uh, well, anyway, but they're trying to fix it, which good on them. I hope they do. I, I, I mean, we have games like Rainbow Six Siege, which was not good when it came out. It was not right. good, and, and then it got a like huge an, player base like two years later. And now it's like an esports staple. Yeah. So like, which is weird. It's possible that they could bring this game back. Yeah. Uh, I have zero interest in, in it because it sound. I mean, I was interested in it when it like around when it came out, uh, but I heard it was buggy, broken, and uh, the the whole always online was yeah. was weird. And and, like, and I've played games that do Destiny poorly, and it's not good. Yeah, I I am only interested in this for the single player campaign, so I will wait until this is like twenty dollars, and mm-hmm. then I'll play it. I mean, it could, it could if I ever play it at all. It might pull an anthem, and it might be cheap uh, before you know it. If that's the case, I'll get it. But we'll see. Last news. I'm slotting this in here. All right, Luigi. You could play as Luigi in Super Mario uh, Bros. Thirty Five. Why? I ain't never known this. <laughs> Luigi can be unlocked as a secret playable character in Super Mario Bros. 35, according to Nintendo Life. Super Mario Bros. 35 has been available to play on Nintendo Switch eShop for almost three weeks now. Wow. And players have finally discovered a very exciting secret indeed. It turns out that Luigi is playable in the game as a playable character, something that Nintendo hasn't publicly revealed up until this point. There are a couple of things you'll need to do to unlock him, which probably explains why it's taken so long for players to notice this inclusion, his inclusion, the Luigi man, the green man, the green Mario. Green Mario. How to unlock Luigi, Super Mario Bros. 35. First of all, you'll need to have reached a star rank, meaning a level over 100. God, I'm like 45 or something. Really? Yeah. A lot. I know. When your level ticks above 99, it's actually it'll actually go to one star rather than 100, with two star, three star, so on following thereafter. Oh my god. Then you'll need to hold down the L button while loading up a game. So you just need any star rank. So you need to be over 100 it sounds like. Right. Then you hold down the L button while loading up a game. You can see Luigi appear in this video below. Mm-hmm. Hold L when you start a match and you can be Luigi. Uh, did it say what his rank was? No. 
No. So uh, I'm just watching the video now. I'm trying to see if Luigi has his Super Mario Brothers 2 physics. No, definitely not. Yeah. That would break the game. There he is. There you That's go. Uh, Combotron Bot notes that the timing for this button uh, holding isn't quite clear, so it's perhaps safest to hold the button throughout the entire game loading process. Of course, reaching level 100 takes time, so that should be your first goal if you're hoping to play as Mario number two. Uh, that's really cool. If I freaking get uh, level 100, I'm going to play as Luigi all the time. So let everybody know that there I'm level go. 100. Uh, that is really cool. Uh, I think we're done with Super Chats. We're done with this. Um, and we... Uh, I have an unboxing. Okay. And we also have a Tweet of the Week. Don't, okay. don't yell Tweet of the Week. I'm not... As so, I know, we did something. We did. So I had Vanillux Pavilion do a thing, but he mm. literally sent it to me and I have not listened to it. So I'm just going to play it <laughs> on the stream and we're just going to hear okay. what it is. Uh, you won't be able to hear it, though. Okay. Unless you just unmute the, the stream and see if you can hear it. Hold on. You'll hear well, it. Don't we usually do unboxes, unboxings first? Well, on the old system, we did. I don't know. All right, fine. We'll do an unboxing first. All right. Uh, all right, I have a Skycam. Also, I want to record this locally, so this it might look a little jank. I'm sorry, but okay. here. Well, Whoa. I lost your camera like a while ago. So. Yeah, whatever. I the whole all of these problems are because of this stupid Logitech webcam. I just got to I got to hook up that Razer camera you got me. I could do a little bit of this. Okay. All right, can I record and? do HDMI out at the same time is the question. Guys, I got the micros. Oh. The small boys. The game gears. The game gears, boys, we got here. Nice. We got, we in this. I gotta, I gotta fix my desk here. Oh, side note. Did you see, uh, see if I can find it. Nintendo made it, uh, the, the Super Mario anniversary game and watch. They uh -huh. announced like how long it's going to be in stores and they will continue to replenish stock until the expiration date. Oh, L let me see. I if did I not see it. that, but also it, it there. Uh, I think I heard that's pretty much solidifying that they're not doing pre-orders. Yeah. All right. I'm going to attempt to record this on this camera. Let's see if this works. Hello, are you going to record for me? Hey, it works. All right, cool. All right, we got the little gate. Oh, I got to do one of these. Boop. Check it out. This is from Play Asia because they don't sell these in America. This is really bright. I got to make it not bright. So we got four of them here and the big window this cost me like 280 dollars damn already do not recommend now will <laughs> i want to make a video on this and i want to call it the smallest official handheld okay is that accurate i think so i guess i'll open the because i don't think there's anything smaller first. than this it's a it's an official handheld that's yes. the thing that's what's I gotta zoom in real hard here. Yeah. Uh, I guess I don't have to open all of them. I'm gonna try really hard not to ruin these boxes either, because these are nice boxes. Yeah. Where's my knife? So this one, so the reason why there's four is because they all come with different games. Uh, I think it's like two games per system. Uh, right. This looks like four. Yeah, it looks like four. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wish I could tell you. It's all in Japanese. So I can't I can't tell you. Uh, this one's Sonic. Uh, I think that's Poyo Poyo. Yeah, it's Poyo Poyo 2. Outrun and Royal Stone. That's what's on the, the black one. 
Okay. There's also a red one, there's a blue one, and a, and a yellow one. The yellow one's the Shining Force one. The red one's the last Bible one. Uh, and the blue one is Sonic and Tails. It also has Gunstar Heroes. The blue one and the black one are the best ones. Actually, I think the blue one might be the best one. Alright, well... I'll just open one of these, maybe two of them, if you're if you're good. Okay. Yeah, four four games per system. I'm trying to see which one. So can anybody think of a smaller official portable handout? How big is the Game Boy Micro? Way bigger than this. Yeah. One. Look at this. Okay, so there's the manual that is all in Japanese. So you can forget that. There, here it is. Oh, I need to get a Game Gear. Shoot, the Game Gear's at the house. I gotta get Yeah, that. and it's broken. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't need to get it then. Well, no, I do, because I gotta show well, you, you gotta, you gotta get it for size comparison. Yeah, oh, damn it. I don't want to put a video out on Friday. Yep. You gotta come out to Long Island to get it. Yeah, maybe I'll postpone it to like... Saturday or something. Yeah. Oh, Saturday's bad. Oh, we'll see. Anyway, here it is. It's got a mm, micro USB. Uh, and a headphone jack. The headphone jack <laughs> is like is massive. Um, volume slider. This, I mean, they did a really good job making this look like yeah. a Game Gear. Oh, it takes freaking triple A's. What? That's so lame. That's lame. This thing sucks. <laughs> so then why does it need the micro USB slot? Yeah. What? That's that's dumb. Anyway, so they also came with the big window because it's so tiny. Uh, this was a real peripheral, the big window. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. It's 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 like the uh, it's like how the uh, Sega Classic. Uh, the Sega Genesis Classic had the Tower of Power. Yeah. It would have been cool if this thing had a friggin' rechargeable battery pack, like yeah. like what we have. This is just plastic. This is just a bunch of plastic. This cost me way too much money. Uh, the Cthulhu says you can plug it in and play it, but you can't charge it. Uh, you know what? We can test that right now. Yeah. Sure, you got a drawer of micro USB cards, uh, well, micro USB cables. I have one plugged into my PlayStation controller right now. How the yeah. hell is this going to work? That's a good question. So while you do that, I'll just read. Uh, the black version comes with Sonic the Hedgehog, Poyo Poyo 2, Outrun, and Royal Stone, The Door When Opened. <laughs> I love Japanese titles. Uh, the blue one comes with Sonic and Tails, also known as Sonic Chaos in the United States, uh, Gunstar Heroes, Sylvan Tail, and Baku Baku Animal World Breeder Championship. The yellow one comes with Shining Force Gaiden, Expedition to the Land of Evil, Shining Force Gaiden 2, Awakening of the Evil God, Shining Force Gaiden Final Conflict, and Nazupoyo are real rocks not shiny for us uh and the red one comes with uh goddess revelations gaiden last bible uh goddess revelations gaiden last bible special the gg shinobi and columns i'm gonna break this okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna break the big window i'm not doing that um, okay i will however attempt to plug in this let's see if this works uh let's see i will see if my xbox will charge it Ooh, so the black blue and yellow ones are rated a uh for all ages um based on zero the that's the japanese equivalent of the esrb but the red one is category b which means ages 12 and up that's interesting. You hear that? Oh, yes. That's the Game Gear sound I know and love. 
Oh my god, you can barely see the <laughs> the caves that are on here. Oh my god. I right, hear it that is. That is ridiculous. Oh my god, it looks I mean the screen very reminiscent of the original. Oh my god. All right, this game had really bad, like Game Gear games have really bad stuttering issues. Yeah. This is running great. All right, here it is. I I mean, this is like impossible to, to control, right? Oh no, there it goes. It's, 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 I'm seeing the slowdown. Uh, yeah, this is not practical at all. All right. That's the end of that. I'm not opening the other ones. You get the idea. I mean, it's it's a cool novelty, but for two hundred and eighty dollars, dude. That is, yeah. That's the price we have to pay because it's coming from Japan. I mean, it's already pretty yeah. expensive. I think they're fifty dollars each. In yeah. Japan. It's it's uh forty nine hundred yen, which I think is like fifty bucks. Forty seven twenty three American. So. Uh, but we have to pay a premium because they're they're coming yeah. over from Japan. Uh, not uh, not not great, not great. Yeah. All right. Uh, where am I? What am I doing? Oh, the tweet of the week. Hold on. Hold up. Let's see if let's see how this sounds. Oh, I'm waiting. I got I got a problem. I have to, I have to actually physically download it. All right. Setting things up. Oh Again, God, we're in beta. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Hell yeah. <laughs> so this is the tweet of the week, guys. Here we go. We got it right here, baby. I love it. Uh... If only we could have seen this coming. This is from Wilson or Volley Boz. Oh, I've seen this. More than 80 firearms and three skulls found in Cannibal Corpse guitarist homes. If only we could have seen this coming. Uh, Cannibal Corpse, songs like Hammer, Smashed Face, I Have Guns in My House for Murder, <laughs> My Home is Full of Skulls. <laughs> yep. Uh... I wonder where the evidence is. I wonder, I wonder what could have led them to believe uh, that, that was heavy a thing. metal. Such a wonderful. Anyway, now is when we talk to you people. Now, yes! now hold up. Yeah, the things are different. Things are different. We don't have a hashtag. We don't have a hashtag. We're not going to do a hashtag. Yeah. No hashtag. And we don't have any comments from the last Wolf Den Live because. There was none. There was there was no last Wolf Den podcast. This is the first yeah. one. So uh, today we're just going to talk to you in the chat. Now, if you'd like, if you want to secure that we're going to read your stuff, you can give us some bits. You can uh, 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 subscribe, leave a little message. Then we'll answer you that way. Or you could just leave a message in the chat. It also helps if you highlight the message. We can't guarantee we're going to lead every, every highlighted message. But... See, well, the way it works is you get channel points for being here and they accumulate over time and you can use those points to highlight your message. Um, I did also decided we're not going to read any messages that's under 100 bits. Otherwise, right. we'd just be reading a million messages. Everybody would give us a penny and we'd just be reading a million messages. Ian says, happy birthday, Bob. It's not my birthday. Uh, Raka says, I love you, Bob. And Will... I love you too. Oh, thank you. Underscore. So Batman is broke now. What happened? So, um, so I haven't been keeping up in the main Batman title, but as part of Joker War, um, Joker pretty much stole all of Bruce Wayne's money, like completely. Um, but be and like they're trying to get it. They were trying to get it back afterwards, but because of like, you know, 
uh, it was revealed that Bruce Wayne was like siphoning money from Wayne Enterprise into like other corporations, which were used for Batman related purposes <laughs> um, and to prevent that from happening again. And to like also kind of protect the fact that Bruce Wayne and Bat- is Batman. He's he's basically not he's not working at Wayne Enterprises anymore. He's not getting the same type of salary he was getting anymore. He's going to get like a, you know, a retirement package and that's it. <laughs> Interesting. So he's still he's still gonna be like fine, like monetarily, but he's not gonna be living in Wayne Manor and like living, you know, the billionaire life. He's gonna like go down to back to basics, pretty much. Back to just millionaire life. Just millionaire life. Yeah. Um. I mean, he he's yeah. Like I said, he's not gonna live in the manor. He's gonna live in like an apartment in the middle of Gotham or whatnot. Um. And Lucia says, if the Batmobile breaks down. You have to repair it yourself. We can't help you. We can't provide you with a new car. Um, I think this is a good idea because the problem with modern day Batman is it's very easy for writers to just say, oh, it's fine. I have a satellite that can tell me everything I need to know about this. Or mm-hmm. I just so happen to have a machine that can solve all of these problems. It's, it's like people complain that Superman is too powerful and can solve everything. Batman slowly turned into that, but from a monetary technology standpoint. So I think this is a good thing. Well, I, I think to see where this goes. I think Batman's great when there's like a ridiculous problem that he needs to solve and he solves it with a real world application. Yeah. And it's when they take the technology and make it fantastical full when it's not cool anymore. Like, you know? I'll give you an example. Like, Everybody talks about how great Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's New 52 run was. Mm-hmm. And it is. It's fantastic. But towards the end, Batman literally used a machine that rebooted his memory. <laughs> he had this big like Frankenstein machine that he plugged his brain into to reboot his memory to cure his amnesia. That's the type of shit I'm talking about. Yeah, that's weird. That's stupid. So... uh. Cthulhu, someone asked if the Game Gear Micro is smaller than the 8 Duke controller. I am saying yes, but what do y'all say? Uh, I'm going to say it's, a, I think it's exactly the same size. I don't have that one within reach of me, uh, but I think it's exactly the same size. You're talking about the 8 Zero. Yeah. Um, you guys highlight a lot of messages. Uh, but we got Dante here with 100 bits. He also has 100 bits. He says, hi, Bob. Welcome back, Will. We miss you. I had hi. to work tonight. Just got back. Here's my late fee. Thanks. Uh, I feel like we missed these. Uh, dark type with five months. I'm late, but I'm here for Wolf Den Li- for the new Wolf Den Live. And student shoe with the 19 months. Uh... Oh, look, it's Eddie with 100 bits. Is ho- uh, Wolfden Dad is home, so you need to watch him out the way. I read that. Yeah. Anyway, Kate McCat with 100 bits. We're going to get some merch with that sweet new headphone Wolf logo. I might put that on a shirt because I, I do kind of like the that way is that a good looks. Shirt, like in general. Mm-hmm. I think that would look pretty cool. Yeah. Uh,. Trep says, love you, boys. Is the podcast always going to be at 8 p.m. from now on? And Will, how is your daughter? Uh, We're trying to get her sleep trained, and so far, not bad. Uh, her bedtime is at 7 o'clock, so she goes to bed then, and she's out by the time the podcast starts. So that's good. I don't have to worry about screaming children during the middle of this. Um, uh, And yeah, the podcast will probably be at 8 o'clock. Yes. Every time. Uh, unless there's like a European guest or something, um, yeah. but it'll be at eight o'clock. Um, good to see you, uh, boys back at it. I missed the start of the podcast. I presume that will is still not going to be on the podcast every week, even though it breaks my heart. Uh, yeah, but he'll be here most weeks. I'll be here most weeks. I would say I will probably be the most recurring guest. Yes. Unless, you know... I, I will I will not be here if like we have other people on the show. Um, um, un- so but- so unless that we have so I want to do one on one like podcast with people, but if we have two people on, then I'm gonna want to have two people on my side. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I want to have a balance. It depends on who yeah. we have. So if we have like AJ and Parker, 
I'm going to want Will. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I missed hearing some comic book talk. Welcome back, Will. Thank you. Um. You know, don't be afraid to just ask me your comic book questions on the stream. I will answer them. Or, of course, you can always follow me on Twitter at Will Wolf, damn it. I will answer yes. any and all comic book related questions there. Also, uh, again, make sure you're subscribing to the podcast channel on YouTube. Yes. There's a link to it, exclamation point podcast. There's also anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast. Yes. Which is where uh, the audio version will be. So we are using Anchor to basically host our podcast and to help get it out to other podcasting services. Um, it will eventually be on Apple Podcast, uh, Stitcher, Google Play, um, Spotify, uh, and all other podcast services. Uh, we're going to get the kinks worked out, but rest assured, it will. if you use it to listen to podcasts, we will be on there. Um. Let us know where you listen to podcasts. Uh, what, what, what's the list? Do we? Can you read off that uh, list again? Yeah, let me pull it up. If if you don't hear the podcast service that you listen on, let us know, and we'll look into it. Uh, so, uh, through Anchor, we will be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Castbox, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Casts and radio public uh i know other platforms like stitcher you have to manually um add that to the anchor profile which we will do um if if there's a certain podcast platform that was not on that list please let us know and we will do what we can to make sure we're on that gaming da daryl says google podcast didn't you say google podcast yes we will be on google podcast yeah. if you don't hear the podcast service you listen on then yeah let us know I use Podbean. I think Podbean is an aggregate. Like, it takes it from somewhere else. A lot of podcasting services are just aggregates. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we got Farah's Rex with a subscription. Thank you. And we got Dark Type with 500 bits. What is Ooh. the taste difference between the Game Gear Micro and the 8 Bit Do Zero? They both have a very plasticky taste. Uh, the Game Gear Micro is a little, uh, tangier, I would say. Uh, I usually listen through the Apple podcast if I can, so that's good. Yeah. Now, most yeah. people will be fun. Yeah. Really, I think it's, if you don't see it on your podcast service, uh, tomorrow, let us know. Yeah. Uh, do you guys make the podcast into cassette tapes? Sure. And we'll, yeah, we we'll mail that. them to you every week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that would be actually really cool. How many people would pay for that service? If it was like $10 <laughs> a month and we mail you... No, it had to be more than that, right? It had to be like $15. It would have to be because like, you know, our podcast usually runs two hours. And I don't think cassette tapes run two hours on both sides. Tape so we, it would have limit. to be sent on two on two cassettes. F typically, forty five minutes of audio per side. Yeah, so it would have to be two cassettes. Yeah. Um. Twenty dollars a month. Would you pay twenty dollars a month for us to mail you? If we ever start a Patreon, that will be the uh the twenty dollar a month. But then tier. that would be five dollars a week. It would have, still have to be yeah. more than that. I think it would still have to yeah. be more than that. Would the labels be handwritten? Uh, yes. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's If it's a mixtape, of course you're going to handwrite it. Jorpod says yes. I have, I have We know a guy who does cassette tapes. Yes. So we could actually do that. But it would have to... We'd have to make more money than, than that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anything else here we want to talk about? Uh... Not that I, think I can we're about of. ready to wrap up the first episode of the Wolf Den podcast. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. The Wolf Den podcast is available every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. All archived versions of this show will be available on youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. And if you check, if you listen to the audio version of it, you can check us out over on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast. And of course, your podcast service of choice. 
Uh, I got to remember that going forward. I want you to record audio of you doing something like that. And then okay. I want to have somebody make a video that goes over everything. So that I could okay. just, I could just like, hit play and it plays Like an that. official end slate. Type yes. Okay. Um, and also, uh, I don't think we're doing clips anymore. I think the clips okay. channel is going to be a gameplay channel specifically. Right. Unless there's something like wacky that happens on one of the podcasts. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, clips channel is going to be gameplay. Anyway, thank you for being here. Sometimes I might play a game after we, sh after we do one of these streams. Not tonight. I'm a very busy man. <laughs> Apparently, I gotta go home like probably tomorrow to get a freaking Game Gear. Get a Game Gear that doesn't work, son of a bitch. Maybe Eve has one. I gotta yell at him. May I, go. Maybe somebody around me has a Game Gear I can get. I know you live in Brooklyn, like the mecca of like people who own weird things. Yeah, but everything's closed now. True. Life's a toilet. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you. We'll see you back next week and here on Twitch later in the week. Goodbye. Bye.